We're visiting the Desert Legume Program, a joint project between the University of Arizona, College of Agriculture and Life Sciences, and the Boyce Thomas Arboretum. And I've had the opportunity to stroll through the legume test fields and take in some of the incredible diversity of structure and flowers, uh, including these enormous spines here on the African acacia. While we were here, we had the opportunity to visit with Matt Johnson, a research specialist with the University of Arizona. The Desert Legume Program uh, was established uh, for four principal purposes. Um, firstly, to develop a comprehensive seed bank of species of legumes or plants in the legume family, the Fabaceae, which are native to or adaptable to arid regions from around the world, uh, to preserve those long term, to uh, make seeds freely available to individuals or organizations around the world that may be working with these seeds, uh, and to, to look at potential uses, to work with, with individuals or organizations to seek, you know, seek out possible uses for these plants, and uh, to promote the conservation uh, of legumes both in situ and ex, ex situ. Now the legume family, of course, is a huge family, third largest plant family in the world with about 18,000 species and very well represented in dry regions, including things such as the acacia sinophila here, the shoestring acacia from Australia, which can become a, a modest sized tree. Um, there are, of course, huge trees in the tropics that are legumes, but in many arid regions, uh, shrubs and trees are very common in being legumes. There are smaller herbaceous plants, uh, ground covers, vines, um, and ephemerals, so it's a really diverse genus. So the little mimosa strigillosa here in the field is an example of a small vine that uh, is just a little ground cover. And legumes, like most plants, are little chemical factories, and uh, we have the, the Arsenhardia orthocarpa, the kidneywood plant, which has uh, a unique characteristic with the, uh, the heartwood, uh, actually several species in that genus. If uh, that heartwood is soaked in water, the water will actually fluoresce when placed under black light. And uh, then the, the Senna aphylla, uh, the leafless Senna, which is a plant from Argentina that we have also here, uh, has uh, stem, uh, just photosynthesis only in its stems. It grows uh, little leaves uh, called eophils only for the first couple of months of life. And then for the rest of its life, it is completely leafless and, and carries out photosynthesis solely through its green bark. Legumes have a huge diversity of uses. Of course, anything you can use a plant for, you can find a legume that will fill that use. Uh, they're, of course, the second most important group for human nutrition after the cereal grains. Uh, timber, uh, for medicinal compounds, uh, for industrial compounds, uh, certainly uh, ornamentals, uh, just a huge range of uses that you can find for these plants. Okay, for ornamental uses, we have a, a species here in the field that we're very interested in, in uh, seeing its potential as a landscape plant, Acacia cana, which is a, a smallish uh, shrubby acacia from Australia that has uh, very attractive uh, narrow silver leaves and uh, very bright showy yellow flower heads that appear in the early, uh, early spring months. 